Okay, I'm getting a go ahead from Facebook. Stand by. Good. Okay. Okay, Are, is everybody ready to go? I'm ready. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to start. Set your the, timer to 60 minutes. Yep. Tell me when it's running. Okay, it's running. So okay. we're ready. We're okay. ready. Okay. Go ahead. All right. When you clap your hands in front of your face, you're on the air. Thanks. Okay, so. Welcome to Talking Peace with the Western New York Peace Center being recorded from Think Twice Radio in the home of the future. Thanks to our friend and producer, Richard Wicca. Thanks, Richard. And we're grateful to our friends at WBNY, Buffalo's original alternative radio station at 91.3 FM, who are very good to put this on at Buff State, and we thank them too. And when we think about thankfulness, we think about our indigenous friends starting off everything with thankfulness, with thankfulness for Mother Earth and for all of the, the waters, the living waters that give us life, the, um, the plants, medicinals and, and food plants, all the creatures, the four-legged swimming and uh, flying creatures and the trees and the, all of the different elements in our creation and for the creator that gives us so you know what we need so that life can continue in this creation if we go on as originally instructed. So we hope and pray to do that as we try. And, and in the, um, we have a very special uh, show today, and we've had a very specially hard time in Buffalo. So um, we're going to talk uh, with real community leaders about um, community trauma and, and what the community needs. So um, so I'm very grateful to have with us. I'm just going to follow in the indigenous way, going counterclockwise. So first, I'm Vicki Ross. I'm the uh, board co-chair at the Western New York Peace Center. Um, very grateful to have Sherry Shirell here. Hi, Sherry. Ms. Sherry. Hello, Vicki. How are you? Good. Glad to, glad to have you with us. Glad to be doing this show. And uh, Nini, Renisa, uh, Kat, Katam. Katam, thanks, yes. thanks, thanks, Renisa, thanks, Nini. No problem. And um, and Betty Jean Grant, the infamous, well-known uh, former county legislator, Betty Jean. Hi, Betty Jean. Hello. And and of course, our fearless leader at the Western New York Peace Center, our executive director, Deidre Email. Deidre. Peace and love. Thank you, ladies, for being on with us today. Thank you. Oh, and, and, and there is just such a lot to talk about. I, I still think that, you know, it's a good way to start off with to just think about, you know, the values that we want to uphold in this conversation and in this issue of the, the trauma and pain and, and unmet uh, needs in our community. So, um, so if we just go around in that same, you know, pattern of just saying a, a just, just a, a value that you'd like to remember in this conversation. So, Sherry. Well, Vicki, thank you so much. Uh, first, on of course, I want to express uh, the gratefulness that I do have uh, for life itself. Uh, I also want to express my solidarity for the residents of the mobile communities, but especially here at home, Buffalo and Deary County. Mm -hmm. um, we all know what a tragic event just recently took place and we're all still trying to come to grips with it. Um, I find myself just in odd moments, just, just needing to hug myself almost to get you know that reassurance that yes I'm still here and yes Buffalo is still here and yes uh, you know everyone's going to get through this we're going to survive and we're going to keep and hold up uh, the memories and the legacies 
of those dear uh, loved ones, those dear souls that we've lost. So Vicki, for me, um, I keep coming back to just this premise of nonviolence 365. Everything. What? Nonviolence 365. Every single day and every moment of every day, as much as is possible. Peace is the answer, and peace is the pursuit, it is the purpose, and it's the goal. Thank you so much. That is a wonderful one. That sets us off in such a beautiful way. And Nini, I just want to say, I know you've had so much grief and uh, and so much more grief now. Um, so many things in life and that have been so difficult, and especially now losing your cousin. Um, so first, our well, my, well, she, she, okay. So, no, just, you know, just our hearts. Yeah. Our hearts are with you and our prayers. Thank you. Um, well, she 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 is one of the survivors. Let me just. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So she was she was she uh, yeah she was the one with the gun put to her head. So wow. she is one of the survivors. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, first and foremost, I do want to send my condolences to all the family members. Yes. Um, that did lose a loved one in this tragic um moment, and as well as the survivors. Um, my heart goes out to them. Um, you know, um. It's, it's hard just dealing with it personally. And, um, you know, it, I'm, I'm at a loss for words because I'm going through so much at one time, just in general. Um, but I want to tell everybody that I love them. Um, I don't know if they're watching the news. I'm standing by them. I'm out every day. It's, you know, if anything is needed on my behalf, um, just let me know. Um, and, you know, the goal is peace, as she said. Um, and, you know, um, it's just, and, and another message I would like to send is, you know, um, we have to change our mindset as a community because right. we don't need the Bidens and the Byron Browns. We need each other at this moment. And our mindsets need, you know, we have to change our mindsets um, first and foremost, in order to receive any type of help or love or anything like that. So, you know, we want to do that first and foremost as a community and come together as one and understand what that means first and foremost, you know. Um, and another thing, you know, to, you know, um, other, you know, Caucasian people, yeah. um, respectfully, um, another message I would like to send to them is, you know, we're not asking, you know, kill them the way they kill us. We're asking to treat us the way that you treat them. Um, we're asking as well for those who are not racist. You know, you hear conversations that we don't hear. Make sure you speak up when you do hear those conversations. Yes. And, and that's all we ask for is just to be treated um, equally you know, and to love one another. The goal at the end of the day, in my opinion, is to come together. That's the goal, to come together as one. We're not going anywhere and neither are they. And just to love each other. So I appreciate that. We love you too. Thank you. And Betty? Yeah, it's been, it's been a, whirl, a whirlwind of, of four days, I think it is. Mm. Seeing like it's been a whole lot longer. It's seeing like we've been grieving for a week. And I think the shock of it is finally wearing off. And I'm getting a little depressed. And I think many in our community are coming to the reality that, yeah, this really happened. And yes, we cannot go backwards. And yes, there are funerals being planned. And these people are going to be uh, taken from us. From our, uh, not from our minds, but physically taken from us going through the funeral. And I listened to Zaire Goodman when he was being interviewed. And they asked him, how is he doing? And he said, I'm not doing well. And they said, you know, you survived. You know, you were shot. You were blessed. And he said, I don't know, because I'm wondering why did I not die? Why am I still here? And I think that's typical survivor's guilt. Yes. He's feeling guilty for being saved. Right. Whether it's divine intervention or whether luck or whether the guy maybe flinched a little bit when he pulled the trigger, we don't know. We know that he was shot and he didn't die. And so 
that's a lot of mental anguish. Being blessed and lucky that you survived, whereas some of your colleagues and some of our community members did not. And so he needs help and he needs counseling as well as those who lost family members because he lost something too. He lost the innocence of, of believing that we're safe in his country called America. And so I, 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 I'm hoping that we would take this message of, of peace and solidarity. And I'm glad that Western Nurse Peace Center, I'm looking at Deidre's uh, hang tag and it's got WNY Peace Center because we need peace. And we don't need to have the disruption that came with the George Floyd rally. Some of those who were rallying with us, marching with us, the intent was to disrupt, to disassociate, to disunify. And if you look at the makeup of the people who are helping on Jefferson Avenue every single day, who are standing there all day, bringing food, passing out food, cooking, serving, praying, singing, a lot of them are not African-American. Fact is, I think the majority of them are not African-Americans. So we can't put this as a black, white issue. We cannot say yeah. that all black, white people are bad. Thank we you. cannot say that. Because I saw too many, and I know too many good white individual to ever even think that. And so we have people sometime, and I saw it uh, at the uh, community center yesterday when President Biden came in. One girl was out there using some of the most nastiest language, trying to incite, trying to incite people to, 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 to loot, not to loot, but to riot or to be disrupted at a mm. time trying to get peace and healing. And the families, all those families members who lost their loved ones were there. Out of respect for them, she should have kept her voice quiet. But mm -hmm. she used raw, coarse profanity trying to incite. Wow. We should be trying to heal. So, you know, I've been on, on a lot of interviews with the radio, radio and on TV talking about the victim, in particular, Kat Mass. Yes. Because, because I know that she served her purpose while she was here. And I know that many of those who uh, were there shopping at Top's Market never expect not to come home. Their family members never expect to get that phone call or to be out there wondering and finally knowing for sure that they had passed or they were saved. So right. we could not stop as a community. We could not stop that crazed, racist individual from coming in. What we can't do as a community is to try to love each other respect each other, look out for each other, look out for our community, and say that, yes, sir, and those who look like you and think like you, you will not defeat, defeat us. You will not uh, have us afraid to walk the street. You will not win, because we have love. We have black love, white love, immigrant love, transgender love. We have love all over, and we're going to continue to move together as a people, as one. Like they said, one love, one city. One one community, right. one nation. That's right. And, and may I please say something before yes. you yes. move to the next person? Yes. Um, so the girl that was using the profanity was actually cursing at me. Oh, boy. to be specific. <laughs> oh, um, and she was cursing and yelling at me because they act they she started at the front, something started at the front. They had us move to the back behind the yellow tape, and I was helping the police get the people behind the yellow tape because they were listening. And she started saying I was um, a sellout and Barbie doll be this and Barbie doll. And in my head, I'm like, well, I'm not going to give you camera time. And then when she realized I wouldn't give her the camera time, then she decided she wanted to walk up in my face. And then mm -hmm. she started, yeah, like, so it, it was in, in, um, yeah. The district attorney actually thanked me for helping him get the people behind the tape, and she didn't like it. And I was trying to explain to her, you know, to start a riot, what will that prove? Are we here to prove that violence is the way? Because it's not. We've been fighting forever in a day, whether it was mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever. Like, we are here to prove, you know, our message is to come together. Our message is to let them know that we love them. So why don't they love us? You know, it, so it was funny that she brought that up because she was actually cursing at me. Wow. Mm hmm Yeah. yeah. Well, you had yeah. what you so did everybody else because nobody bought into what she was trying to sell. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, you deserve all thanks. You all three of you and all four of you. Right. Thanks and praise. Deidre? Uh, I think one of the values um, I bring here tonight is the, the idea of courage. It takes so much courage um, <laughs> to live every day to continue to go about your business, even in the sight of, you know, this tragedy and different connections we have to it. Um, courage and uh, perseverance, knowing that after the first day, after this first week, after we will continue to mourn, we'll continue to be angry, we'll continue to be sad, well, you know, like it's it's not going away, you know, and to persevere through that because it's it's um it weighs heavy, you know. I cry every day, you know, uh, about this. I'm starting to. Yesterday, I just started getting anxiety, you know, in the store, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, my heart truly. You know, just go, every person in that store was a victim. Every single person in that store was a victim. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that doesn't take, a, you know, take away from those who, who passed and those who were injured. Right. You know, their families were victims. Their family of the family, they were victims. They are victims. And, um, if we're not careful, we truly can be victimized in our minds uh, just from being so close, so so connected. My mother lives on Jefferson and High. She goes to that tops weekly or a couple of times out the week. I go there and I pick up things for her. She has COPD, she is disabled, and she presently has COVID. And I thought the first, when I first heard, that's the first person I called, mom, where are you? Right. Mom, where are you? Like, that's how close it was for me. Our church group meets on Butler Avenue, right up the street. Our children for a peace gym for Western New York Peace Center meet at the Meriwether Library on Jefferson and Utica. This is how close, you know, to home for me, mm. it, you know, it became. So it, it's, it's going to take courage and for us to lift each other up, to keep holding each other's arms up, keep holding each other's legs up, keep holding each other up, feeding one another, hugging, you know, as, as space, time, health permits but connecting with one another in positive and healing ways because it truly will take com communing together to get through this, not apart. And another uh, lady told me, another friend of mine told me, she said, you know, food is good and everything. She said, but we have to have these real conversations be you know, about race. And I would say even a bit about economics. Absolutely. You know, because, you know, believe it or not, he's afraid the 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 child that shot these people because he was just coming out, coming into adulthood, was brainwashed to believe that his uh, economic status and development is going to be um, uh, erased because of other groups of people living in and around him. He was brainwashed. This young man, how many other convert, how many other thoughts, how, ma how many other people think this way? In any other group, it can be anybody else. You know, these are theories that have been around for a long time. It's not the first, you know, that's that's old and it's untrue, but it's old. 
you know, these, you know, these uh, replacement theories and so on. But who's going to re-educate everyone? Who's going to educate our children? Because just like our children, African, African-American children have been miseducated and misled and misread. The same thing for our white brothers and sisters. They have been miseducated and continue to be miseducated. <laughs> so, you know, so I, so I basically come, I come back to courage, perseverance, uh, and conversation and community. No, I think. Oh, um, just, well, oh, I, I would, I would just add to that the two values that are truth and love. So love, it, which permeates every, you know, everything that you all said, and and that that deep pain from the love that is that injury, that is the trauma because of the people that are loved, because of the people that we care and worry, and worry for. And the other part of truth is back to the hard conversations because it's a balance of like, we need the unity, we need the love for everyone and from everyone, but we also need to talk about what's really true and what the issues really are and not gloss them over with buffalo or or gloss them over by saying you know the 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 city of good neighbors you know i always think of anyway i will come back to that one but city of no illusion so let us talk about the truth of the matter and not pretend it's something other than what it is so, and sherry i'm sorry now what oh. you're gonna say uh sherry in <laughs> No, Vicky, Vicky, as it turns out, I'm going to piggyback also on what you just said in addressing what I was going to say. You know, um, Buffalo also, as we all know, was called at one point the city of light. And as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, light is the only thing that can drive out that which we understand to be darkness. So in what my sister Deirdre, Deirdre said, um, this teaching, this wrong teaching, that has clearly gone forth and is represented and illustrated in racist ideology and white supremacist ideology, and for that matter, any type of hateful ideology that would exclude or minimize or discount the humanity of any group of persons based solely on the existence of that difference, that otherness. So when we look at what is needed in this moment right now, um, Platitudes certainly will not do. We're all suffering tremendously. Um, you talk about feeling almost, it's almost like an out-of-body experience that happens every now and then. And I find myself, you know, just needing almost to give myself a hug and, and reassure myself that, yes, I, I'm here. I made it through because like many of you, we, if not all of we, that's top Jefferson store was for me, just as important uh, in my daily and weekly and monthly food uh, gathering as any flagship store anywhere. Yes, it was a smaller version store, but that store means a tremendous amount. It has a whole tremendous value for we in the, in the Black and African American and, and, and Brown community. Latin, I would see like my, my Latino brothers and sisters shopping in that tops, and I shop on Niagara Street, you know? And you know what I, I think is, is just wonderful too, is that tops always, for me, especially since they placed that store after all that lobbying and advocacy effort that went forth to encourage, if not incite them to do that. Um, they always emphasize, as does a, a, a couple of other companies in our region, family. They emphasize family. Mm -hmm. And so it is, Deidre, my sister, it is going to be, as we know, teaching begins in the home. It is going to be family. But like you've said, what do you do? What, what, are we as a community needed to do when clearly family needs to be addressed, the culture, what it is that's been communicated at household level and within households, because racism comes from somewhere. It's almost like that generational thing that's, that's been going on here. And that young man at the same, for me, at the same time, his otherness, his even being from outside the region, 
I've heard emphasis being placed on the fact that he wasn't from Buffalo, as if violence doesn't happen in Buffalo inflicted by persons who are from Buffalo, or that that kind of violence is a different kind of value. You know, if he had been from Buffalo, Niagara region, our loved ones would still be gone and they would have still been taken so horrifically, unfairly and violently. So for me, the emphasis needs to be clearly, absolutely where it needs to be. And that is that hate is the enemy. The Bible teaches, I am a Christian. So that is what I go to, that's my go-to resource. And the Bible teaches that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our fight is really truly not with each other. It's with what is in here and what is in here in I each other. That is what we are fighting. Mentality. Absolutely. And I I believe that uh, it's nice and admirable to see so many people from outside our community so many white individuals who probably live, most of them, or many of them, in rural, in the suburb, in the rural area. It's good to see them into Buffalo, passing out the food and praying with us. But they're preaching to the choir. The right. message that needs to be taught, it should be in the churches in the suburbs, in the rural area. It should be in their That's communities. Right. It should be in their black club meeting. That's right. Yeah, you preaching to the choir. We need to find a way and have the conversation about race and racism yeah. and stop sidetracking it. Because, you know, the food is only going to last for a little while. Mm -hmm. It takes away the idea that the store is not there. But what happens next year when nobody has addressed the issue of racism, when nobody has addressed the issue that someone who lived in Tonawanda, a mixed race couple, had killed all niggers ridden on their fence? Mm -hmm. This is mm. after 10 right. people lost their lives in a in, in the top supermarket. Monday or Sunday night, they paint the fence. They paint the fence. A guy on social media made a very a correctional officer said that made a very dehumanizing statement in talking about top supermarket and those who were killed. And you know how you know how there's a spill of a bottle of ketchup or of jar of mayonnaise is filled and they said clean up on aisle four well this guy took that one step further he said clean up on aisle four and how about aisle five aisle six aisle seven aisle nine talking about the people who were dropped who were laying there in their own blood making a joke out of a devastating i said not just buffalo tragedy but a regional tragedy wow and he was, no. um, and, he, and he, and last year he collected from our taxpayer working at the, uh, I think, Attica Correctional Facility or some, he was a C, a cursed officer. He made $185,000 a year from the taxpayer. How? And some how? of the taxpayer money came from those people who were lying on the ground who was being treated as a joke. That's what I find offensive. That's what I find that he could have the audacity. And how can he? Because he hasn't learned. He has not been around people. He has not been taught. His, his parents, his neighbors, his community never taught him that it is insensitive to use a derogative character of a tragedy and put it on Facebook so people can laugh about it. No. The way. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, we, the way I say no. And that was horrible. And I get it. And I agree with everything. And I also look at it like, God is exposing a lot of people. A lot of people, God is exposing a lot of people. Now, we know that's one less, and they, they fired him. And the people that, um, to my understanding, that commented under when they wrote the letter. So I feel like that's four or five less people that we have to worry about now that God done exposed all these people that's putting these things on these Facebooks. Those are, le and not to say we have to worry less about them, but God is exposing a lot of these people, you know, so... Um, I, you know, I was going to bring that up. Another thing I wanted to say as well, you know, yes, we all are hurt and we are, like she said, community. But how do we get our community to understand, to, 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 under, to have a better understanding mentally? Because, and I'm going to give a perfect example. 
you're right, it is taught in the household on both sides, though. So if, if, if let's say they put a community center in the middle. I know a guy, and I was going to bring it up later, who wanted to do something that would impact Buffalo. It's probably, you know, related to this tragedy, but f for further down the line, not just give clothes and food and temporary things. And, you know, I'll get what you guys talk about it later because that was the question I was going to ask you guys to get some answers because I will talk to him. He'll actually be up there tomorrow if you guys go up there. But how do we get our our people to understand these things? Because we can put a community center there, right? But if we, as a community, don't take care of the center or how do I get somebody, you know, someone so to come in and understand that you can talk about your problems and get this counseling and not hear them say, well, this is just who I am and not want to receive it. How do we make our people receive what we're trying to do? Because it starts with us. And if we don't understand or they don't understand what we're trying to do, what are we really trying to do? The first thing is to help them up here understand that we are a community. When these cameras go away, how do we keep pushing to send a message that this is it? You know, that's the first understanding that I feel like, you know, in my opinion, that we need. How, when these cameras go away, all these people standing around on Sunday's best trying to look good for seeing that. How do, are y'all going to come back and cut these elders' grasses or help them around and build this community up? That's what I want to see. How, how do we continue this? How do we, but we have to make them understand it to, to, to even continue or accept it mentally. That's the first step. Go ahead, whoever. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if Deidre, if you you have something you want to. No, I, I agreed. Um, uh, because it is a change of culture, on on all levels and in in every community, it's the change of culture, and even if you change laws, you know, gun laws and disarmament, even if you do all that, you still have to deal with the culture. Yes, ma'am. Um, of it all. You know, so it, it so it's a longer process, but if we understand that one, it is a process, and two, yes. what the process is, I believe attitudes can change. But yep. you know, we can't. You know, we want to do it on a global basis. We can't go global yet. We got to start local. Yes. You know, that's we start, yes. We already know that Buffalo is is segregated. Yes. However, you know, it's it was brave. Of, of our white brothers and sisters to come in from the suburbs and come into our communities. That was pretty brave, I must say. Even though I know, you know, there's a couple of levels to that, how we might look at it. But <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the savior complex. I ain't going to talk about all that stuff. However, it's it was still an outpouring of love, I think, yes. to, to the innocent. It was an outpouring of love and connection and saying, I don't know this community, but I'll try anyway. That's you know, and I think that majority of them felt that, you know, like, I don't know who they are. I don't have a connection, but I'm going to try to reach out. And I think when you break those kind of barriers, you know, when you break that Main Street barrier, that, you know, cheap the Waga barrier, you know, like when you break some of those barriers and start to, you know, move in and start not only helping each other, but having a conversation. Yes. You know, like, you know, I want to see the same droves of people come in yes. the town hall town hall meetings. I want to see those same droves of people. Yes, man. You know, come for, the, for the real conversations that's going to hurt. Right. I yes. want to see the same droves of people coming yes. in to have that, to have those 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 real discussions. Yes. That's what I want to see. So that's, okay, so you said it better than I did. I knew you would, but it's fine. Oh, no, you are all right. <laughs> also, also, I think, too, and I hate to say it, but I think a lot of it might be a little bit Guilt. Guilt that, you know, I'm here in the suburbs. I have a nice life and I'm in a well to do neighborhood and my streets are, are, are paved and my potholes are fixed and everything is, is hunky dory for me. And I've watched the news and I watch how the East Side, how when, when I and my family and my friends, when we had this white flight in 1960, 1970, and we didn't mm -hmm. look back because we didn't want, and we weren't sure of how we want to deal with it with a neighbor that what didn't look like us. So we flew to the suburb. And when by fly, flying to the suburb, we took all the resources out of Buffalo. Right. We really strangled Buffalo by taking the money away from it. And That's we right. left a population that could not afford, could not afford, and we took the jobs away or the jobs left. And, but I, we knew about that because we heard it, I saw it on the news every single day. 
But we said, oh, okay, okay. We didn't do anything. We didn't write those letters saying Buffalo is not being treated fairly. We need to get re more resources. So I think some of that, I believe, not all, but some might be that I'm here helping because I knew there was a problem here. I knew that there were this. And so I did nothing, so I'm going to make up for it now. Well, right. you know what? Better late than never. So now's the time not only give us the food, but give us a conversation. The conversation about yes, racism. Right. Conversation about discrimination. Come, right. Come over. Yep. Let's do Come that. Here. Let's not do halfway. The food Come is over here. Okay. Absolutely. It, Come over and talk to us. And see things. why, right, you know, so-and-so have to sell drugs because right. mom didn't get the job because yeah. she was more qualified, but she didn't look like you. Absolutely. Come over here and see why we in low poverty because the landlord helped. That, that that's it. I, I had that conversation all day today. You right, right? Mm -hmm. And then you will have a better understanding of why this is, you know, all drug dealers are not criminals. They are helping their families, you know, because the cops done killed their dad. So now it was one parent in the house or jailed their father. I had this conversation earlier, you know, not all people, you know, who, you know, dress a certain type of way is a rapper or whatever, you know, they look at, you know, because if that's the case, then all white people are racist and you don't want us to look at you that way. So you can't look at us that way. You know, do, we are our, our own individual, you know, people, you know. I play loud music in my car, you know, and I'm not going to lie, I do. And I love music and I play it super loud, but then I get out the car and have a conversation and I'm like, oh. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have common sense. I just like loud music. I'm deaf, you know, like, <laughs> but stereotype, you know, but come and see why things are the way they are and then come up with a solution or, you know, we can converse and see how we can help you know, one another. But us as a community have to start there as well. We have to want to help one another. It's not your side of the street but versus mine. We have to come and love each other as well. So it plays on both sides, yes. in my opinion. Right. So, right. Sherry, what were you going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I just wanted to know, just say, because we haven't said it yet, uh, but we lost an individual uh, on Saturday. We knew several of the individuals who were um, killed, right. and including uh, Catherine Cat Massey, right. who was a member of We Are Women Warriors, and was just such an outstanding uh, humanity and advocate, advocate and activist, and she is going to be dearly missed. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, you know, this has got to be a teachable moment. There has got to be a, a, a productive and a, a positive uh, uh, producing uh, development that results from this. Because if there is not, then hate will win. Violence will, will prevail and, and dominate the conversation instead of just being the subject matter focus that it needs to be rather than an environmental uh, condition that is, is perpetuated by our silence or our wrong focus on these other, other side issues and conversations. There needs to be a focused conversation right. about what it is that led, to, that led to what happened and what led to what happened is how some ones, and meaning some, not just that young man, and I use the word man loosely, but and not just how that individual, but other persons who think the way he thought, who have those thoughts and what they have in their heart and the decision that they make to act out how they deal, how they manage that, that conflict. There is a, a lesson in, in conflict resolution that and in, including internal conflict resolution that needs to become out of this. And you know, if we have that kind of conversation, how can community unity not follow? It's right there. We're right at its doorstep. And if we address hate, we address how to manage, how to handle, when even if you're hearing this from even parents or siblings or extended family or social networks, and you're hearing this hate, what is it you're supposed to do if you are a peace-loving, if you're a balanced man, if you're a balanced woman, boy, girl, whatever have you, what are you supposed to do? We need to know what it is we're supposed to do. And if we look at the environment, the lessons are right there. 
The animals teach us what it is we're supposed to do. Are they out there slaughtering one another? Do they have mass killings of one another? Even when you see groups of them in Mother Africa taking down, for instance, gazelle, and you see these animals going after, they don't slaughter the whole tribe. They go for the vulnerable. They get that vulnerable one, two, maybe three, and the rest, the rest go off, and the circle of life continues. But in humanity, we are the civilized beings in the universe. We are doing mass slaughters, we're even killing children and being murdered by their parents. And I've said for the last decade or so, Vicki, there needs to be in the United States of America, like we see happening in other countries, needs to be a year of the child right here in this country because of the level of violence, hateful lethality that people are aiming at children. And violence is taught. It is learned behavior. Right. And if they see it model, they're going to they're going to exhibit it. You know, I need to add I need to add what we we just had a uh, session with the peace jammers. I think I mentioned that right before we started. And they're what they have inspiration, education, and action in in um, peace jam. And so there is a global call to action project. So the topic they picked out of 10 topics was ending racism and hate. They picked it. And their slogan that they picked, negate the hate, rise above with love. That was before, that was before any of this. So and they and they made a banner and they carried it in the women's march that you may have you may have seen it there. Um, so just, you know, back to the, the children, you know, that out of the mouths of babes, they know what we need to do. You know, Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's so touching and so clear. And so I think part of, you know, the hard conversations include, you know, like a truth and reconciliation, which also means including that we have a problem here in Buffalo being the fourth most segregated city in the country. So when we say city of good neighbors, why? Well, is my, are my neighbors white? Yes, they are by chance. Are your all my neighbors black? Uh, are they mostly black? No, nope. nope. and I stay right up. The, I stay literally uh, on the street uh, where that uh, where Top Set is, and my neighbors are white. Oh, Some okay. of them are white. Well, good. And there are pockets, and I don't mean to overstate it, but we're the yeah. most segregated. And the other thing, the child poverty, which we're number two on child poverty, I think, Um, you know, addressing our real issues and talking about them and doing something about them in a pragmatic kind of a way of like, we need to, you know, about the gun, you know, just selecting like our top three things, you know, certainly the, the, the white supremacy, white supremacy and the, the, the hijack, I mean, the, the Republican Party has gone in such a direction. It's, it's not about the party. It's about there is such a lot of lies going on, just plain lies. The, it's, it's beyond anything that what we hear, all, social media, the social media having um, so much misinformation going out. Anyway. Well- Can I say something about this gun thing? Okay, they say, you know, take the guns away, right? Which ones? The ones that they're selling or the ones that's already on the streets? Because here's my problem. You take the guns away, right? Let's say from black people. Y'all let they let the white people oh. buy the guns with no, oh, no. With the no white, white, it's the white people with the guns that are, are okay. So I just want to make that okay because I feel yeah. like the oh, only people that are targeting oh, oh take the guns off. I'm talking oh, about police please. just in general. They'll and pull a black man over quick and say, oh, he had a, a you know got a gun, but then they'll let the one that just threatened to shoot up the school go buy the gun. And it's not a problem. He's not pulled over on the way to Buffalo three hours and something, but you know, one of our black men can't get up from one corner to the other corner without being pulled over with this gun. And this little boy was able to buy a gun and drive three hours and whatever. Like, that's the problem. I'm sorry? Kyle Rittenhouse. Two words. Kyle Rittenhouse. Right, right. Or this young yes. man, the the people, yes. the white supremacists yes, that are amassing these 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 military stockpiles, it's happening. We know it's happening. 
yes. I just, I'm just, you know, so I, that that's my thing. I don't like, you know, I, I'm not going to say I don't like. I just feel like when we talk about, you know, um, getting rid of guns, we need to be more specific about oh, who yeah, guns. Absolutely. Well, one we need to get rid of and who guns, you know, because hey, they're, you know, well, thugs with the guns. The police, there's a lot of po changes needed in the policing, and we're having a lot of trouble with that. Thugs with badges. Buffalo. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, I, I think those are all, you know, um, what we call like branches, you know, of the issues. You know, mm -hmm. it's just another branch. You know, right. my uh, our um, congregation have this picture of a tree and on this tree have all these different issues, you know, gun violence, homelessness, you know, uh, uh, you know, children's, you know, you know, all these different, all of the world's problems. And, right. you know, we have to, whether it's the preacher, the activist, the, you know, we're trying to cut down these branches. And if you're a gardener, if, if anybody have ever cut down a tree, you know, you will know that after you cut it down, even the stump will come back sure. 10 more, 10 sure. more branches because it's trying to survive. Right. But you have to cut it down at its roots. And that's what we have to do. We have to go down to sit, figure out what the roots are because racism is more of a, it has been a tool of those who are, uh, that have power, that have utilized, uh, utilized it and used it as a tool to divide the poor, right? Yes. Those who are oppressed. And, you know, beginning of America and so on, you have many, including white, and African people that were poor and that were enslaved and that were indentured. And they use the, the, the idea of race to divide the people so that they won't come together against those okay. who truly have the power and the resources. And this is a part of the ideology that has to be uh, changed. Right. I'm, I'm poor like you. He, he probably was in a because he's in a little town somewhere out in, you know, who knows land, they, they just as poor. The real, real, right. you know, right. rural com communities right. are very poor. They right. hardly have, you know, access to resources as well. You right. know, there are farmers that are, you know, committing suicide. You know, there are many poor com white communities throughout New York state, you know, but, you know, our community may not know too much about that. But as we are educated and understand, hey, we're trying to eat like you're trying to eat. Right. No, we're you're like, so right. What's the real, I, you know, I, what's I, the real I, issue? Why do you feel this way? Why are you being taught this ideology? Right. I just, uh, you know, know. They're going to take our jobs. Who told you that? Right. right. And that, Actually, that's... Can I just interrupt to add where um, we have a comment that just uh, Franklin Lavoy just put. Fox mm -hmm. is a propaganda machine that is fomenting hatred and fear. You know that. It's a dangerous industry run, you know, um, and I, I can't read the rest of it, but that's the basic thing. And we know that a lot of misinformation mm -hmm. going out. And and like you said, hate fomenting and dividing, dividing to conquer. So go ahead, Betty Jean. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but a gun conversation, um, guns in the, in the black community is not bad. Mm -hmm. But a gun being used by drug dealers to kill other drug dealers, that's bad. That's uh, gun, right. ownership, gun ownership is a right. That's the Second Amendment right. But what we yeah. don't need to have illegal guns coming in and certain out the assault rifle because I see no use right. in modern society for a, an assault rifle unless it is a war of uh, a, a war, a war with another country. And even then, I think assault rifles, rifles should be abolished. But to have Young 18 year old having assault rifles coming to Buffalo or anywhere else and dealing and kind of ridden house and anybody else, I think that needs to be addressed. But nobody's talking about that. They're talking about urban youth, guns coming to Buffalo. Oh, no. I'm talking so about that. So, that, so mm -hmm. that's exactly what I was basically saying. What I'm saying is, right. don't let this gun violence slogan get turned into a black issue. It's Absolutely. not a black issue. Oh, because no. after what just happened, if, if after what just happened, I feel like, is it really scary now that drug dealers have these guns? The reason why drug dealers have these guns, and let's be real clear about this, and may, some may disagree, and let's agree to disagree. It, this uh, um, law, These laws were designed 
around this. So you have people that have made a mistake, but none of us on here have never made, you know, have not made a mistake. It's not one perfect person wa walking this earth, right? Now I have a felony. Now I can't go back and fix this and then go and get a gun, but this little white boy can go and grab a gun with no problem. And then just give me a second. So yes, they should be legal, but once you make a mistake, which we all have made a mistake, you can't get one now. So now what do they do? Okay, let's take all the guns from the drug dealers, right? But little Tommy could come over here and he can threaten a school, which he should have had a red flag, and he shouldn't have been able to buy that gun, but because he white, he was able to do it, right? And then now he can shoot everybody up and nobody can protect himself. So I'm kind of on it. I don't, I don't know what to think about I, that. I just need to say that the mass murders have been by white supremacists. You look uniform, right. almost uniformly, I won't say every single one, but the mm -hmm. mass majority, it's by white supremacists. Yes, yeah, so we're allowed getting these people to get guns, allow them to legally get them, and then we might not have a lot of illegal guns, illegal guns on the street, but we're not allowing them to say, okay, I made a mistake, yes, he got a felony, unless it was something extensive, but you can get a felony for anything, you get a felony for spitting on somebody at some point. That's right. a felony right there, you know, and now you can't buy a gun, but little Tommy can go threaten a bomb threat at school, and he can still get a gun. So no, we have that, no. that's, it's layers to that gun stuff as well. Absolutely. You're so right. You know, I want to say, and uh, Sherry, we'll go right to you. I just want to tell you all that we just have like, you know, just a little over five minutes left. Okay, well, I'm definitely just be quiet. Fun. No, no, nothing like that. So, Sherry, what were you going to say? Can You're you on mute. You're on mute. Uh, yeah, that's since, uh, I'm going to say it very quickly, but since February of this year, the We Are Women Warriors organization has been conducting what we call No Excuses Initiative. We have been having community forums that happen on the last Thursday of each and every month, and we're going to continue them and in tribute to the legacy of our dear beloved Catherine Cat Massey. We are going to continue to promote Nonviolence 365 as a way of thinking and a way of framing behavior and a way of modeling and exhibiting actions that all of our not only Black and African American community individuals and households need to, but every household in our it's region, out. in our state, and in our country. My sister, you know, you're talking about um, you know the the realities of the 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 the, the hood, the, the neighborhood that we live in, and um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Talib Kweli. Talib Kweli is a hip hop we almost started in New York City, but Talib Kweli, he's a very learned individual, comes from a very learned family. He's a black and African American brother, but he's got a song called Get By. And our, our culture is so very important. And we tell, we tell our stories through our art as other cultures do. But in Get By, which has a, a mix with Mos Def and it has Jay-Z on there and Kanye West. And I want to encourage you to listen to that song because some of what you've been saying tonight is in that that song, it's in the lyrics of that song. And they're talking about the fact of how Jay-Z has a lyric, and he talks about how, why he became, at one point in life, uh, a street, uh, uh, not a street, mm -hmm. uh, why he Everyone did that. Has a story. So, you That's know, and at, the, and at the same time, having said that, and having that appreciation, and knowing people from the Bronx, who, who knew the people who started hip-hop, including one of the gentlemen that's going to be at the next forum um, this month, end of this month, um, from, from the Bronx, but um, there is, if, since uh, 1980 and 2013, some 260,000 young Black men, or Black men. When I say young, I'm thinking they're under 90 years old, 67 years old, between 15, 24, 34 years old, 260,000, that's a quarter of a million Black men that were murdered in this country. And they predominantly were killed by guns. Uh, most of those guns were illegal guns. The Justice Department does an incredible job keeping tabs on the crime that they do become aware of. And persons, they, they are able and my to identify question to you is, and, they, and they help how us many, understand. How many black they men us were killed by... 
I'm going to I'm going to finish this because yeah. we've got a couple African minutes, African, so I just want to ask you a question as, as well. a black and African American woman, what I can speak to, I, I don't have to think and I don't have to suppose what's happening in somebody else's community. I know what's yeah. happening in it's my community, Saturday. and I hear the cries of the mothers, the especially the single mothers that have tried to, with their best to raise children, and maybe some of those mothers were challenged and were not able to do the best or most optimum job. But I hear my community. I have so crying. Black and I boys. see the blood on I the street black of my boys. community. And I what I'm saying boys. is that it is time that we as a community take a no excuses approach when it yes. comes to the violence can, that can we I can change. Can I ask you a question before I time is up? Thanks. How Thanks. Thanks. many Thanks. black men were killed by men with legal guns as of white men, like the massacre, as of school shootings, like the massacre, as of cops, like the massacre, as of just racism in general. You got numbers? Okay. Okay, let me say Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's end it because, it because it's just as many. It's okay, just well, as many. So if what you're going to talk about it, that's why I said you have to talk about it on both sides. Okay. It can't be a one sided thing. Okay, you know what? We're just we're needing to wrap up. So I'm going to yes, thank you for having given uh, some final words, Sherry, and um, and also Mimi. Just make and sure, she, yeah. Jean, if you have make a sure final number, we're just going round. This is our last. Uh, this is you know we're halfway round for our last round. So, <laughs> Eddie Jean, yeah, but I want to say that uh, the T Heard Amendment can be repealed this year. This is Congress' last chance because next year we might have a Republican majority Congress and Republican majority in the Senate. So what we need to do this year is to call Congressman Brian Higgins to have him to vote to repeal the T.R. Amendment and get his colleagues on board. I talked to President Joe Biden yesterday. He is in support of repealing the T.R. Amendment. He's going to work with Congress to do that. I have his word. He has my email address, and I'm going to be talking to dialogue with him. What we can do as American citizens, as citizens of Buffalo, is write our congressperson and let him know that we want the T-Hard men repeal, because that way these AR-15 and other assault rifles will not be so easily gotten by those who come to our community and other communities to wreak havoc. So please yes. write to Congress Brian Higgins and get that T-Hard Amendment, T-I-A-H-R-T, T-Hard Amendment, get it repealed. Thank you. We'll, we'll be Thank sure you. to put that in. Deidre. Thank you. Just thank you, ladies, for for being on, you know, today, you know, and these are those tough conversations that need to be had. I know we only have an hour, but I think that we have enough time, hopefully, you know, God given time, universal given time to have those discussions to know where we want to go as a community. Um, and yes. of course, it's, it's many layers. So just I just thank you all. And it's going to take us, the mothers of the community, to bring our communities together. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much for the women, yes. the mothers, and real and all of us take playing our part. Right. So well, I, thank you for having me. I love you guys. Well, nice to love meet you guys. All. And I appreciate everybody's opinion because we all see things differently. Right. We different lens. So yes, thank you. I appreciate you guys. We Great couldn't thing. be more grateful for having you all. I want to say this is talking peace. And together we've been talking peace in truth and love. Yes, together we stand, divided we fall. Absolutely. And the struggle continues. Thank you, yes, Annie. Yes. Nice to meet you guys. Yes, Have a great to be on with, with everybody. I don't know how to use this. Thanks. Thanks for the people on Facebook. Yes, thank you. Yes, so, how thank you. do you hang this thing up, though? I Thanks for the people who joined us on <laughs> Facebook. Thank you, thank you Betty Jean. She's going already. The, the, town town hall is next, the town hall is next Thursday. Yes, where, yeah. where is that? I just want to the Mary Weather Library. Yeah, okay. a week we're from tomorrow. tomorrow a week we're from tomorrow. Oh, a week from, but where is it? At the Merryweather. Oh, okay. At the okay. Merryweather at 5 o'clock, is it? Yes. Yeah, 5 o'clock. Yes. Okay. Yep. So thanks okay, thank you. I hope to see you guys there. Thank Just you, remind Mary. me. Thank you, Deidre, always. Yes, always. have a blessed one. I just don't know how to hang this thing up. Do I just turn my phone back around? Or uh, just you, make sure you know what you do? You should find a little red button somewhere when you click it. It will go. Oh, really okay. Go. I see it. Yep. Okay. okay. Bye. God bless you. Again. God bless you. Love you. Bye for now. Great job. Thank you. Bye for now.